Welcome. In this video, you'll learn how to create impactful reports and dashboards in Sales Cloud, including best practices, tips, and working with pre-built dashboards from the App Exchange. Let's get started by exploring reports in Sales Cloud. Reports are a key Salesforce feature that provide insights into trends, patterns, and other aspects of your business so you can make informed, data-driven decisions. Reports can be built by end users as well as admins, empowering users at every level to gain insights and find solutions using data. In Sales Cloud, a report is a group of records from a primary object that meet criteria that you've defined. For example, you could create a report to find out how much revenue a campaign generated or identify your highest value accounts. The first step when creating a report is to choose a report type. Think of a report type like a template. It determines the primary object, available fields, and any secondary related objects that can be included in the report. To help you get started, Salesforce comes with a large number of predefined standard report types for standard objects, as well as the ability to automatically create standard report types for custom objects. Popular standard report types include campaigns, contact and accounts, and opportunities with contact roles. In some cases, there may not be a standard report type that provides all the fields, related objects, and relationships you need. This is where custom report types come in. With custom report types, you can create reports that go beyond the standard report types and better meet your unique business needs. For example, if you needed to report on which opportunity records have no assigned contacts, you could create a custom opportunities with or without contact roles report type. Now let's move on from reports to the next stage, bringing together related reports on a single dashboard. In Sales Cloud, a dashboard is a visual snapshot of key metrics and trends from multiple source reports. Each widget on a dashboard is based on a single source report, and the same source report can be used for multiple widgets. For example, you could use the same source report for both a pie chart and a table to highlight the same data in different ways. Filters can also be added to a dashboard to make it easier for end users to view the data from different perspectives without changing the source reports. And dashboards can be configured to show data based on the permissions and visibility of a specific user, called the running user or provide individualized views of data based on the logged-in user using a dynamic dashboard view. By adding multiple widgets, filters, and a customized view, you will create an interactive and visually appealing dashboard. Now we know the basics. Let's walk through how to build a report and dashboard. For this example, let's create a report and dashboard for our sales team to help them report on opportunities with closed dates in the previous financial year to date. To get started, we open the Reports tab. It will default to our Recently View Reports. In our left side menu, we can change this view to a different category of report or folder. If we want to create a new folder for this report, we click on the New Folder button and give it a name. Folders are a great way to keep your reports organized. You can even add up to three levels of subfolders to a folder, giving you a lot of flexibility with your setup. And you can also use folders to control who has access to a report or dashboard and what type of access they have using the Share option. Next, click on New Report. The first thing we must do is choose a report type. This is the most important step as it will control the records and fields that can be included in this report and cannot be changed later on. The report types are organized into folders, but if we're not sure which folder the report type is in, click on All and then use the search to find it. For this report, the Opportunity Standard Report Type is a good fit. We can confirm what fields are included using the Details tab. Once we're happy we'll have what we need, we click on Start Report. When our Report Builder opens, we can see a bunch of fields have been added automatically. Let's remove the fields we don't need for this report by clicking on the X next to the field name. This will make the report easier to read and understand. Now let's add a new field. There are two ways to add a new field. We can use the column search bar to find and add the field. Or we can expand the field sidebar if we want a larger view of what's available. Once we have the fields we need, we can reorder them either in the left sidebar or by drag and dropping the columns in the preview panel. Next, let's add a sum and average summary for our amount field. These values will appear at the top of the report, helping end users quickly understand what the total amount and average is across all opportunities. You'll notice this report automatically refreshes the preview anytime we add and remove fields. If we don't want the refresh to run automatically, we can turn this off by updating the Update Preview Automatically toggle. 
Next, let's add some organization by grouping the records. Let's add Opportunity Owner as our first row grouping, so we can look at opportunities based on who owns them. We also want to group by what month the opportunity closes in, so let's add close date too. By default, the close date appears as the full date, so let's update the grouping to show calendar month instead. Now let's add some filters. We can see some filters have been added automatically. Every report will have a show me and date range filter. Any other filters are dependent on the report type you choose. For example, this opportunity status filter appears on this report because we use the opportunity report type but it wouldn't appear on a report built using the account report type. Because we want this report to show only opportunities with close dates this fiscal year or last, let's update the close date filter to current and previous FY. If we want to add in any other filters, we can use this add filter search bar. For example, we could add an opportunity owner filter to only see opportunities that are owned by certain sales reps. Or if we change the operator type, we can filter for those that are not owned by certain sales reps. To include more than one matching value on our filter, we add a comma between the values, and we can also filter by a specific region. If we add in multiple filters, we can also add filter logic. This controls how and when multiple filters are applied to your report. We use AND logic to return records when they must match all criteria, and we use OR logic when the records returned only need to match part of the criteria. By default, the filter logic in a report will use AND, if OR filter logic should be used instead, you must manually set it. We can also use brackets to create more complex filter logic, including grouping multiple filter conditions together and using a mix of AND and OR filter logic on a single report. Let's say, in addition to showing opportunities belonging to certain sales reps, we also want to see all opportunities coming from a certain region, regardless of owner. To achieve this, we use the OR filter logic and set it to one or two. This will return records that match either our first filter, opportunity owner, or our second filter, account region. Now let's add a chart to visualize the data. We click on add chart, then click on the gear wheel icon to customize the chart's type, title, color palette, and more. Once we're satisfied with our report, click save, add a name and description, and then save the report in the correct folder. Finally, click run to view the report results. Now let's get into the dashboard side of things. There are two ways to add a report to a dashboard. If a dashboard has already been created, you can use the Add to Dashboard button on the report. To add the report to a new dashboard, navigate to the Dashboards tab, then click on the New Dashboard button. We give the dashboard a name, description, and add it to the correct folder. Then click Create. We now see a grid-style screen where we can start to build the dashboard. To add an element to this dashboard, we click on Widget. These are the building blocks of a dashboard. We can choose to add image, text and chart, or table widgets. Let's click on Chart or Table and add in the report we've just built. We can keep the same formatting as the report by ticking Use Chart Settings from Report and then clicking Add. Once the widget has been added to the dashboard, we can resize and adjust it as needed. And we can add up to 25 widgets to a dashboard with a max of 20 chart or table widgets. Now let's go ahead and add another widget to the dashboard, but this time let's customize it. Let's use the same report as before, but this time let's highlight which sales reps have the most opportunities by changing the chart to a pie chart. Let's also update the title, add a subtitle, and then click on Add. Once we've finished building the dashboard, click Save, and then click Done. Now that our dashboard is ready, we can subscribe to have it regularly emailed to us. In order to do this, we open the drop-down, click on Subscribe, set our subscription preferences, then click Save. And there you have it. Our new dashboard is ready to be used. Building effective reports and dashboards may seem time-consuming, but it doesn't have to be. The Salesforce App Exchange offers many pre-built dashboards, both free and paid, that can speed up the process of building reports and dashboards. Some of our favorites include the Salesforce CRM dashboards, which includes a bundle of dashboards for common customer service, sales, and marketing reporting needs. The Lead and Opportunity Management Dashboard, which helps you keep track of leads and opportunities in your Salesforce account. And the Clean Your Room Dashboard, designed to inspire your sales team with a weekly pipeline housekeeping dashboard. Once the app has been downloaded, it goes right into your Salesforce org, 
with all your existing reports and dashboards. The new dashboard can then be used as is, but if it doesn't fully meet your business needs, you can also edit it or create a copy and update that. Keep in mind, while anyone can browse AppExchange listings, only Salesforce admins and users with the download AppExchange package's permission can install AppExchange apps in your Salesforce org. To learn more about how to navigate and download from the AppExchange, check out the AppExchange Basics Trailhead module and our Salesforce help documentation. And that brings us to the end of this video. We wish you the best as you start exploring reports and dashboards in Sales Cloud. For more information, please check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.